have the introduction of a new villain in this installment of Night Quest the Crusade, the Tally Man, as we cover Batman Shadows of the Bat issues 19 and 20. These issues were written by Alan Grant, who sadly passed away in July of 2022, and has art by Vince um, Girano, Gira, I, think, I think that's how that's pronounced, uh, colors by Adrian Roy, and lettering by Todd Klein. We open on Asbats intervening in a robbery against an immigrant shopkeeper. He almost overdoes it with the goons and anks over the impact of the system until he sees an ad for a sensory deprivation chambers and decides to give it a try. Elsewhere, Big Mike Mahoon, a gangster with dwarfism, is having a birthday party when instead of a stripper coming out of his cake, it's our new villain, the Tally Man, who is here to collect a debt from Mike in blood. Oh, rather, against Mike, his brother Johnny, and the Batman. And then the Tally Man then proceeds to just, you know, gun down everyone in the party. While all this is going on, Asbats breaks into the place with the sentry deprivation tanks and gets in one of the tanks. We start off with flashbacks to the material we've already covered, with John Paul accepting the mantle of the Bat, along with the Azrael miniseries. Before, as we move backwards, get we get into images of John Paul's father indoctrinating him subliminally in the system as a child, even as an infant. As an aside, I really love how surreal John Paul's experience in the tank is. It's a variety of over-the-top images strung together that, out of context, seems almost incomprehensible, but within the context of what we've read so far and with the narration, helps provide a bunch of information within the seemingly unstructured structure of dream logic. Back with the Tally Man, he interrogates Johnny Mahoon's wife, where he learns that Johnny is at his warehouse before he leaves the wife comedically bound and gagged. Back in the ISO chamber, John Paul is asking himself what truly fueled the formation of the Order of St. Dumas, as Johnny and his bodyguard go into the place, which is where they've been storing some drugs, in order to pick up some heroin to be cut. Back in John Paul's head, he discovers that the system includes measures to prevent him from further investigating his own programming. As John Paul emerges, Johnny and his friend fought open fire on an empty ISO tank, thinking that the bat is inside. Asbats handily knocks them both out off page and then stuffs them in the empty tank. I don't know what you're doing in there, Batman, but you won't poke your nose in my business again. Ha! We, and we won't even have to buy you a coffin. Do you think we got him? Do you think we killed the Batman? Why are you, Willie? Stupid? How could we miss? What? You think he could have been in the other tank in the room? Nah. The tally man hears the gunfire and shows up to find Johnny and bodyguard stuffed in the perforated ISO tank. They are, in turn, perforated. The issue ends with the tally man ambushing Batman and him basically facing seemingly certain death, plummeting off of a building. Our second issue of the storyline begins as Asbats, again, nearly hurling his death, before grabbing onto the side of a building and starting to climb back up. On the roof, Tally Man flashes back to his secret origins, where a lone shark terrorized his mother, and as Asbats returns to the roof in the two fight, we continue the flashbacks also continue as well. The debt his mother was terrorized over was his dead father's, and when the lone shark struck his mother, Tally Man, or who he was at the time, at the age of 12, beat the lone shark to death with a fireplace poker, after which his mother killed herself and he went to jail. Back in the present, as the fight goes on, Tallyman says that Batman helped the Mahoon set up the murder, murder of Joey Buto, which Asbats knows likely isn't the case because that's not how Bruce rolls, and he also laughs at the irony of somebody trying to kill him over the presumed actions of the previous Batman. Now, this fight pushes Asbats into the absolute limits of the system, at least under his own control. And then for a moment, Asbats slips into the full Azrael persona, though he doesn't give the speech, and he nearly kills the tally man before Jean-Paul regains control and stops short of murder, though he's still maimed the tally man in the process, and Asbats withdraws. The issue ends as Harvey Bullock and Lieutenant uh, Danny Kitsch find the tally man and are horrified at his condition and what Batman has become. This was an interesting storyline. Near as I can tell, the bit with Joey Budo's death doesn't appear to have been a tie-in with any past Batman story, which is a little disappointing. It would have been interesting to have had some degree of a meaningful connection with a 
previous Batman adventure from Bruce Rain's run to kind of tie in the continuity of the character. Um, and having this degree of John Paul encountering repercussions from past stories. Now, the Tally Man is a really great look, giving us some Victorian or Edwardian Penny Dreadful energy. Unfortunately, the name doesn't quite work. I mean, look. Alan Grant's from the UK. He's a long-established author. He's done plenty of stuff with 2000 AD, writing Judge Dredd works, that sort of thing. Um... My association with the name is with the Henry uh, Belafonte song. Probably for most American readers, it would likewise be the same. And not, you know, British tax collectors. I don't know how well that song, that about song, did in the UK contemporaneously, or just in general. So I don't know if if there would have been the same exposure to the song um, as far as Alan Grant is concerned. On the one hand, Harry Belafonte was on The Muppet Show and he performed the song there. And The Muppet Show was a big hit in uh, the UK and indeed um, Lord uh, Lou Grade, a British TV executive um, was and producer, was a incredibly instrumental in getting the Muppet Show made, on the one hand, on the other hand, Harry Belafonte's appearance on the Muppet Show came of significant ways in. It might not have been on British television anymore at that time. It, it's a little tricky to say. I think ultimately the issues with Tally Man's name are probably why he's a character who hasn't had the legs that characters like Anarchy had. Tallyman would make an appearance again during uh, No Man's Land before making a cameo appearance during the Battle of Metropolis during Infinite Crisis. He wasn't killed, but he wasn't he didn't survive either, and he hasn't gotten any sort of revival after New 52 or anything like that. Or Flashpoint. Next month, we have another assassin for Asbad to deal with. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>